This is starting to become really addicting all over again. Straight hallways and square rooms are a bit boring, so let's liven it up a bit and make the dungeon a little more interesting, a little more spicy, a little more zesty, a little more ambrosial, a bit more redolent, somewhat more piquant, if you will. This stuff is fun to make, and your players will appreciate it. Hello everyone, Wylock here, and welcome to the fourth in a series of Dungeon Crafting Essentials videos. Previously, we did tiles, we did doors, we did treasure and loot. Today, we're going to build some architectural features. Now, in those previous videos, I covered the basics like how I texture my stuff and the paint scheme I use, so I will not retread that ground here. I'm also not going to spend time talking about the minutia of the stuff when it's obvious what I'm doing on screen. So today is really just a series of rapid fire ideas for you. Architectural features to spruce up your dungeon. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. First up, let's make some curved tiles. Now in the tiles video, I used MDF hardboard. And then I casually said, oh, but you could use cardboard if you want to. Well, here's how I would do that. Single corrugated cardboard, such as you'd find from any moving box. And drawing out a quarter circle with a compass. Now, if you don't own a compass or own a large enough compass, like this one doesn't go to a six inch radius, you can make one. Here's some food packaging cardstock. Punch a hole in it, then measure out the desired radius and punch another hole there. Pin one end in place, and with a mechanical pencil on the other end, draw your circle, or quarter circle in this case. Here's some more circle tip for you. Inevitably, we'll want some two inch quarter circles. So I set my compass to a two inch radius, draw it, and then setting my ruler so that it touches the point in the middle that the compass needle made, draw a line. Adjust the compass to be something slightly larger than the radius and draw one curve on one side like this. Then do not adjust the compass, go to the other side and draw another curve. Where those two curves meet, Connect that with a ruler, and now you have a circle perfectly bisected into four quadrants. And I just cut these out freehand, kind of slowly and carefully, two or three passes with my utility knife. This is graphics medium chipboard. It's that brownish grayish stuff at the back of a legal pad, but you can buy it in bulk like I do if you want. There's links in the video description below. It's about a 16th inch thick or a little less than two millimeters. Anyway, exact same technique here, cutting out the exact same piece and then I'm gonna hot glue them together. Why do this? Well, the hardboard bases of all my other tiles are 3 16 inch thick. And by adding these two materials together, it matches. Also, whenever you attach two materials together, they naturally develop a resistance to warping and bending becomes very strong. From there, the process is the same as before. I got my dollar store foam board, get the paper off, hot glue it on, and then use the foundation as the jig on the hot wire table to carve it out. I made two each of a two square radius, a four square radius, and a six square radius. And you can do a lot with that. Look, this weird shaped room here, these are the four inch radius and a six inch radius put together. Make sort of a weird egg shape. How about some secret doors? Several of you commented in the doors video about putting screws in the bottoms of the frame of the doors that I did. So yeah, worth a try. I've got some frame pieces here, identical to what I did in that video. And by lining it up straight and just screwing it in, it's very bottom heavy. I, I am surprised by how effective this is. All right, here's a chunk of foam that's a half inch thick, just like the frame. And I'm gonna carve it up and texture it just as everything else. Uh, one thing I don't think I was explicit about before, I like to trace all the edges as the very last step with my soldering iron or whatever your hot tool is and chamfer all those edges. This helps it look even more like cobblestone. Little dab of hot glue to attach the frame to the rotated portion of wall, the, the secret door that's opening up. And three dabs of hot glue on the bottom to secure them to the base. Yeah, that is looking the part. And this thing is bottom heavy and stable. I love it. What about all the doors I've already made? I wonder if I can retrofit them. So I took those doors out and carefully sliced away the bases, then Put the screws in very carefully and reattached with hot glue. Worked perfectly fine. Some of them weren't perfectly lined up down to the atom. You could see some raw cardboard. I just touched that up with a little bit of dark gray. And man, this is exciting. They they feel heavy in my hand. And they're, I mean, you, of course you can knock them down, but someone bumping a table now, whereas before they certainly would have fallen over. Now they will not. 
This is very exciting to me. Thanks to everyone who suggested that in the comments. Let's look at the secret door in context real quick. We'll throw it on a tile here with some other stuff and a miniature for scale. Now you see those alcoves on either side of the secret door. Let's talk about how I made those. I started with some two inch thick foam. If you don't have that in your area, then the one inch thick works. Just make two of these and stack them up. But not shown on camera, I cut it down to a two inch cube, marked out dead center on one face and impaled it on my homemade circle cutting jig and cut out a circle. Then milled that block in half, two alcoves, shazam. Couple screws in the bottom for weight, very nice and textured up as usual. I was careful in the very back where the wall is very thin to not go too deep with the needle, lest it go out the other side or just generally weaken the whole thing and make it very flexible. Let's throw it down on a tile with a little fascinator in the alcove. I made six of these and you know, you could put anything in here, a statue, magic item, could be part of a puzzle, whatever. It's an alcove. This little bauble here, I found this at Michael's. I literally took it out of its package and put it down. I did not make this. And here's that clip again from earlier in context. So imagine you had three alcoves here. In the middle one, the party found that it had a secret compartment in the back. So you'd remove the third alcove, insert this secret door. Versatile modular terrain on the table. Love it. Stairs. Okay. I don't believe in elevating an entire level of a dungeon just so that you could put stairs and then you can show an upper and lower level. I find it to be needlessly impractical. So abstraction, I'm starting with graphics medium chipboard, just a two inch square. Then from my single corrugated cardboard, a one by two inch rectangle hot glued on one side, foam board rectangles, and I cover up the corrugation with some paper or some very, very thin cardstock and hot glue. These get painted up with the usual technique, but with one little finishing touch, I'm gonna mask off the top step and where the tread meets the riser, a little bit of airbrushed black to make a shadow. And then spritzing the corners of the bottom step. The intent here is just to kind of give the illusion of it's going downward. And then this thing could be set anywhere. It could represent the bottom of an up staircase or the top of a down staircase. But what about circular stairways? Well, it's back to the hot wire table, cut out some circles, mill those down deli counter style into some like quarter inch thick slices. Chop those up into quarter, half and three quarter pieces and stack them up smartly to make a spiral staircase. Texture up as usual and it's really looking the part. Whenever you connect two foam pieces together, just like a door frame, hit that with your hot tool and it obscures the seam that's there. I'll show you finished staircases in a minute. What about pillars? Let's mill down some more foam. I've got some one inch squares and some three quarter inch columns. You know the drill. Cobblestone them up, hot glue them on. Couple of screws in the bottom for weight and paint. So here's a tile we'll throw on a spiral stairway, couple of columns, one of the alcoves from earlier. And now I'm finally starting to get the, the look that I've wanted for so long. I could only get so far with dry brushing flat cardboard. There really is no substitute for lengthy detailed foam work. I'm gonna toss another piece on here, this archway. Anyone remember the sewers of Riften from Skyrim? I'm gonna make some of those. So back to the hot wire table, milling out a two inch diameter circle and simply cut it into the whatever desired shape. Now this thing is one inch thick and the overall length is six inches. So I've got one inch on those sides that are actually gonna, you know, touch the tile. Room enough there for two screws each, make this thing very heavy. Also in one of them, I scored a rather deep channel on the inside. And this is cross stitching canvas or granny grating. You can find it at any crafting store. I'm gonna prime it with God's gift to humanity, Rust-Oleum 2X flat gray primer. Paint it up and glue it into the channel with a bit of white glue. Here it is with a miniature for scale. Nice. Hey, one more idea. Look at this. This is an off cut from the arches I just made. I'm going to reuse it. We'll cut out the center, leave, I don't know, half inch thickness on the outside. Re-glue it back together where the wire had to come out. Cobblestone it up, trace and cut out a base from graphics medium chipboard, 
and hot glue it in there, making sure to caulk that seam real good because I have a resin pour coming up. Now what makes a good fountain? Looking through my bits bin or one of them and I found this. It's the bottom of a disposable plastic champagne flute. This will work, but it's smooth plastic. So once again, we need God's gift to humanity. Here it is primed, then mod podged, then given the base dark gray that I put on all my tiles. And I'm gonna dry brush it with my slate gray. And you can see, even though this is perfectly smooth, if you're very gentle with a lightly loaded brush, you can dry brush and, and fake a smooth stone look. Almost uh, granite, maybe? I don't know, but yeah, this works. And just like the tiles, tamp it all down so it matches. Here we go, Art & Glow Casting Resin. I love this stuff. A little pricey, but it is a very good product. If you use it, and I think this is true of any, but follow the instructions. Really make sure you do 50-50 as exactly as you can. Now I want this to be grungy dungeon water, so I'm gonna put in a couple drops of brown ink and a couple drops of green ink and mix that all up. In hindsight, I wish I'd gone only one drop of green because this comes out to be a little bit a mm, little bit greenish, but hey, it's murky, it's moldy, it's underground, it's in a dungeon, that's fine. Now I'll step away for a moment and allow you to enjoy this pour. I was going to do it in two phases, but you'll see midway through I sort of realize, oh yeah, it's a fountain. It's supposed to like flow over the edge. So let's just see what happens. All right, here it is in context with a miniature for scale. As it cured overnight, I came back and the color actually changed a little bit. It became a little darker. I like it. I still would have used a little less dye, but for a grungy dungeon fountain, yeah, this works. Okay, four videos in. Let's throw everything we've made so far into a random layout on the table. Now, as I was recording this narration, it occurred to me that direction of a spiral staircase might be a thing, so I Googled it and yeah, it appears I built all of mine backwards. Oh well. Unfortunately, the overall thickness or height of these cardboard tiles ended up being slightly more than all my hallways that I've already done. That I'm not sweating it too badly. Hey, I mentioned this before, but it bears repeating here because you can see it in a few instances in this video where I wasn't rigorous enough going back and rounding the corners of each individual cobblestone. Some of them have sharp corners and those instances just don't look very good. It clearly looks like carved foam and not cobblestones or randomly stacked blocks. So again, a key tip to getting that classic look like you see in uh, Hearst Arts molds, round the corners of all your cobblestones. Be disciplined. If you have ideas for other architectural features, feel free to leave a comment. I'll be doing at least another video on architectural stuff. I will also have a video dedicated to traps, another for furniture, and so on. Also sealant. I haven't addressed any sealant. It's because I haven't applied any to any of these products. They're pretty hardy as is. But a nice matte spray clear coat can really help enrich color and make it pop. I'm just scared to do it because of frosting. So I've bought several brands and I'll be experimenting with them and doing a video about which one I recommend. But for now, there's no clear coat on any of this. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is somehow your first exposure to crafting things for your tabletop role-playing games, you should know there's a whole world open to you. Find us on Facebook, the Tabletop Crafters Guild. 40,000 members strong and growing. Like, subscribe, Patreon, etc., etc. I'm Wylock. Thank you for watching. Make things and play games. Yeah.